first level of understanding what meditation is, which is like from a uh, neurophysiological standpoint, we just described it. And then there's the idea of, of practice, right? Of, yes. act, of actually doing, um, which are two different things. But you have to, it's like people will say, oh, you know, I, I get a meditation when I, when I run or I do meditation when I'm moving. And it's like, no, you don't. you're focused on the running and that's good, but it's not, it's not formal practice. It's like saying like, oh, I move my joints, I flow. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but no, it's not like you're not, you're not doing the uncomfortable work, right? Which is just actually for most people is formally sitting still and, and, and practicing their attention. Now you can take that, ideally you're taking whatever you, that container of what you learn in that practice and you're applying it throughout the day over time. That's the, that's the goal. But so many people just confuse, like you said, they think they know meditation is good. So they just assume that they're doing it when their, no, their, their mind is less uh, noisy. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. They use it as a thing, as like a, as like a therapy. And, and, and we're, we're, we're partly my, my, uh, our profession bad because we, it's like, uh, what's a good thing for back pain? And then list, you know, chiropractic manipulation, NSAIDs, meditation. It's like they use it as a, I'll take fries with that. They use it as a, <laughs> as a tool. But ultimately, when I talk to patients and I'm teaching them how to meditate, I, I, I always tell people, don't expect anything because as soon as you expect something, you've undermined the entire purpose of it, right? The idea is to expect nothing because what you're doing is sitting and trying your best to do the ultimate form of homo sapien nothingness, which is to just sit there and be your sensations, right? Mm -hmm. that, like, yeah. That's what, it's just, a, you have to practice doing that. And then as you do that, you start to feel, like I said, what anger feels like, feel what sadness feels like. So you can start to anticipate, maybe using our level three consciousness, when you're starting to feel a certain way, and then you can bring it back to, you know, I don't want to say the now because that's so cliche, mm -hmm. but the ability to stop what you're doing, because when you're angry, again, if you're angry at something, usually you're angry at something that's about to happen or something that did happen, but when you really mm -hmm. stop and think about it, you sitting here right now, are you really angry right now? The answer mm. is you no, know, right? So, you know, I might have a deadline coming up and it's making me, you know, it's making me upset and I'm getting, uh, my temper goes here and I'm, and I'm, but I'm really only have that because I'm projecting my future self, which doesn't exist, right? I'm yes. The future, I'm saying whatever is going to happen in the future is going to make me upset. So I might as well just discharge upset hormones and neurotransmitters now, which doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Or I'm thinking, man, I really fucked up two days ago, which means that now I'm just, I'm getting a physical reaction now, right? I'm, all yes. the chemicals, the, the chemical soup is happening now, but it's happening based on something that happened two days ago, which means that what, what you're doing is illogical, right? There's, if you stop and think about it right now, you usually, you're going to feel better about whatever the problem is. Even if you're in pain, if you just stop and think about the pain, like just stop and be here and take in the sensation of pain, a lot of the times for my patient, that makes them feel a lot better when they're not taking pain and then compounding pain with future worry about pain. 